Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to be pouring on a vase. I haven't been all that interested in doing vases before this, but I thought it might be fun to have uh, some 3D art at my show next month in addition to the wall art. So that's what I'm doing today. But speaking of fun, let me first show you. I found these cute little resin um, balloon dogs on Amazon and I bought them and poured on them and I think they're just darling. Look at that. <laughs> I haven't uh, varnished them yet. I'm going to just spray them with a the gloss varnish, but they, they're already shiny because I used Artist Loft Ready Mix Pour Paints. And they're a little tricky because um, of all the crevices and the weird shapes. So you, I held it by the nose and the tail as I poured and turned and Anyway, it was it was a little tricky, I have to say, but I think they came out really cute. They make larger ones, but they're quite costly. These are only about maybe $5 a piece. I might get a big one just for fun, though, and keep it. Anyway, that's that. I'm using the Ready Mix paints once again for the vase. I did do one before, the other day, and um, I didn't record it because... I didn't know how I would like it or what, but um, I'm not unhappy with it. I think it's kind of pretty. I love the bottom, which is too bad because that's rarely seen. And I decided to jazz it up with some silver leaf. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Tell me what you think. Um, so there it is, my first one. It's not varnished yet. It's just a prototype. <laughs> won't won't see the light of day. But I have been watching a few videos, and um, Anna Blount gave a great tip on hers. Where is that thing? Oh. She puts these little cl clear uh, plastic discs on the bottom of her vases, and I think that's great. It protects the surface that the vase is sitting on, as well as wear and tear to the vase itself. And um, I'm, she didn't sign hers, but I'm going to sign mine in um, a metallic pen on the bottom there. And then place this on with clear Gorilla Glue. And it just finishes off your piece nicely. Fits perfectly on these uh, Dollar Tree vases. It's a three-inch disc. And um, I think it, it looks great. So that's what I'm doing that one. And now let's get to today's. I just put it on a this cup firmly in there so, <clears throat> so I'm able to lift it off the uh, canvas. Oh, and the canvas I uh, put a book underneath so I have a nice firm surface for this to sit on. If you don't do that, it's, you know, the weight of the vase, it's kind of bouncy. And they want it to be level, so I check the level with this darling little level I got from with a picture hanging kit. And that is pretty spot on. So that's important too. Okay, the colors I'm using today are black, gold, copper, bright blue, and cerulean blue. I'm almost out of copper, but it's a pretty bossy color, so that's fine. I'm not going to have to use too much of that. Now, I've seen people put a base coat down and maybe pour two cups worth on their uh, bases. I don't feel that's necessary. I only used one cup for that blue one you just saw, and, I, and it gave fine coverage. So I'm not using any more than that. Now, I might not get enough for my canvas down below, but I don't care. This is just kind of a practice thing. I'll probably use it, um, not a practice, I'll just use it as my base for uh, all the vases. I don't need another 12 inch canvas. Oops, why did I move that? Okay, let me fill up the cup. Oh, that's why I moved it. <laughs>
Okay, so I did fill that up pretty full. It's just, it is just about to the uh, line on the outside of the cup there. A little over, perhaps. And here we go. Well, I don't need gloves until I go to move that aside. I think I have it angled so you can see the top and the front. It's difficult on a, on a 3D piece to really show you the whole thing without a bunch of fancy camera stuff, which you know I do not possess. I don't know if the speed, oh, isn't that pretty, if the speed with which you apply it is going to make a difference. Let me do kind of a, oh man, I hope I get some of that copper now. It probably sank to the bottom. That's what usually happens. There's some gold. Where's that bossy copper I was complaining about? There it is. Well, the bottom's gonna look pretty. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that's quite pretty. Let me walk around and see how it looks from the side you're looking at. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let that drip for about five minutes. It's a shame you can't just freeze it <laughs> at some point where it is like, stop, stop dripping. But, you know, it's going to move for a good five minutes. It looks prettier on this side, I must say. Um, okay. I'm going to I'll just let it ro go for five minutes so you can watch the, the time lapse. I'll speed it up and then um, and move it off. And uh, maybe I do have enough on here to uh, make a, a little painting from. Okay, well, it's been a good five minutes and it's still going to uh, move a little bit, but for the most part, I think I'll end up with what I'm looking at here. It is much prettier on this side, I have to say, because there's more of the blue, the dark blue and the light blue. And uh, isn't that interesting how that copper that I thought had disappeared has pretty much taken over that side. As I said, it's very bossy. <laughs> when I show the dried result at the end, I'll, I'll show you this side of the vase because I gotta say, it's quite pretty. In fact, maybe I can bring you over there. You might be going upside down here. But yeah, isn't that pretty? Okay, now I'm gonna move it over to a drying area and then I'll go ahead and tilt this little 12 inch canvas. These are, this is the tricky part because it's slippery. In fact, I'm just gonna have to, I don't wanna mess with the vase at all. So I'm really trying to, whoa, to not touch it just grab it by the slippery cup. There we go. All right. Um, I don't know if this is enough to cover, to cover that. I'm going to fill up the cup a little bit more, add a little more paint to this, and maybe I'll make it into a, a ribbon pour. Now I've got stuff all over my hands. I'm, gonna... I'm taking one glove off. 
This is this is why I have such a, a love-hate relationship with um, fluid art. It's so messy. I don't like messes. <laughs> with the glove. You have to wear gloves with these paints because if it gets on your skin, and it will, it takes a long time for that to come off, unlike other ones. Okay, I just have to add some more here. Oh, let's do some ribbons. Oh man, you can't even see them. more gold and the light blue and you know what that's copper most out of it come on don't forget it I am out of it I'm just gonna <laughs> Go crazy with it. This is not going to be a beautiful painting. Oh, I got to move that book. That's, oh, shoot. <laughs> That's a nice book under there. I want to move that before uh, I tilt with my clean hand. Let's see. No paint. I guess I'll do one-handed tilting. Oh, for Pete's sake. That's kind of fun up there. I guess I could hold the dry sock point, couldn't I? Oh, I'm so rusty. I just haven't been doing much in the way of videos lately. I'm rusty at, at pouring and at uh, narrating. Next week, however, I'm doing a collaboration with the fabulous Sarah Mack on Tuesdays. So I hope you will join us for our live premiere. We challenged each other, I'll, but I'll save the details for the for next Tuesday. You know what? This isn't that bad. It's kind of kind of exciting. Oh, look at I got I wasn't gloved up. Touch up that little tiny bit there. Okay. I actually like this. I, I didn't think I was going to, but I do. All right, my friends, one last look at the uh, vase over here. rather like that too. Okay, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.